Uh, my name is Brian Jordan. I am an assistant professor of poultry health and production here at University of Georgia. I have a split appointment 50-50 in the Department of Poultry Science, and, which is in the College of Agriculture, and in the Department of Population Health, which is in the veterinary school, and PDRC is um, one of the units within Population Health. There are some things that we can vaccinate against. You know, antibiotics don't work against viruses. Same way in humans, same way in companion animals, same way in chickens. So we use a lot of our vaccines against viral components and antibiotics have no effect against, right? And that's a situation where really vaccination only is the only way to get protection. There are a lot of bacterial components that we can vaccinate against. We do have a good, tool, a good toolbox of vaccines against some of our bacterial pathogens, but there are a lot of different bacteria that can cause disease on, in any setup, humans, companion animals, chickens. And so there are times when the use of antibiotics is necessary to treat flocks. The issue in the poultry industry, or what has become an issue with consumers and, and advocates, is the judicial use of antibiotics or the use of antibiotics as what we as what's been termed as growth promoters. And that's really a misnomer. It was that was the language that was used. Um, it was probably mislabeled in the beginning that wasn't a very good label to place on it because we're not using antibiotics to promote growth what we're actually doing is stabilizing the bacterial content within the bird and so they are still serving the same purpose that they would serve if you got an infection and had to go to the doctor yourself you get an antibiotic to stabilize that bacterial population to prevent disease the question of contaminants in poultry meat whether it be antibiotics or even back to the hormones question um, is a one that's common in the general community. But it's really, I would say, not a valid concern because we do have withdrawal times for all of our antibiotics. If we use an antibiotic in poultry, whether it be as a growth promoter or as a therapeutic treatment, there is a specifically defined withdrawal time that's governed by the FDA and the USDA. And birds, all poultry meat is tested as it comes through the processing plan to ensure that there are no residues of any of these antibiotics or even chemical compounds present in the meat as it goes through slaughter to ensure that there is no uh, induction of or there's no transference of some of these compounds to a consumer. Um, the larger concern was not because the, these programs were originally implemented not because of transference of an antibiotic to a consumer and then that person developing an antibiotic resistant bacteria within themselves the original concern was allergies. Somebody may have a penicillin allergy or maybe they're allergic to tetracycline. And if there was a contaminant on a, on a product, on a, whether and it could be beef cattle, it could be in dairy, it could be in poultry, but if there was a contaminant in that product, they may have an allergic reaction to it. And that was the reason that all this testing has been put in place to ensure that you're not gonna have any residues that may induce a reaction in a person like that, not for antibiotic resistance. The understanding of antibiotics and how antibiotics work and how our food is produced is lacking in the general public. Um, there is a lot of research that's been done looking at antibiotic resistance, the ways that bacteria develop antibiotic resistance, and there are multiple mechanisms. It's not if you use antibiotics all the time you will have a resistant bacteria. That's not the case. There are uh, genetic mechanisms, there are gene transfer mechanisms, there's a lot of different ways that, uh, that uh, bacteria can develop resistance and they can develop resistance in areas where no antibiotics are used and they can develop resistance in areas where antibiotics are used every single day. The welfare of the flock um, is definitely affected by reduction in antibiotic usage. We in the industry on the production side can overcome some of these disadvantages from antibiotics and it will require us to do better in a lot of our practices and that's a good thing. Uh, but in situations where we do have disease outbreaks, being able to use antibiotics as a tool for disease control um, or eradication uh, is very important. And in a claim such as no antibiotic ever or in completely antibiotic free, um, that's gonna definitely decrease the welfare of those birds. If they get sick with a bacterial infection, something that an antibiotic could treat, uh, but we're not allowed to use that, then it goes against the, 
the oath that veterinarians take when they register to be a veterinarian. Uh, it also decreases production for the producer, and so their the economics of their business are hurt. It's going to decrease the quality of the chicken that's being produced, which is going to decrease the product that comes to market, and it's going to increase the price of that product because we're not able to be as efficient as a production system as we could have been in the past if we had had that tool available. Now, we are working to overcome some of those efficiencies with vaccines, with uh, different production practices. But at the end of the day, there is there still will be a large need for therapeutic usage of antibiotics to prevent, to treat, and to control disease outbreaks. Using alternatives to um, antibiotics is an area of, of, of intense research at the moment. And there is, I would say there's a decent database of research that's been published and it's continually building. Now there's not as much research in these products as there have been in, as there has been in the past in antibiotics or vaccines or even some chemical therapeutics that we use. Uh, minerals, um, spices, organic acids, inorganic acids, uh, things like that are, are really, uh, probiotics, prebiotics are in the forefront of these categories. And there are some that show promise but so far there's nothing that's been able to replicate the efficacy of using an antibiotic. Even in combinations you can see small effects but you don't get the population effect that you get when you use an antibiotic product. Now that may change in the future. Maybe with more intense research we could get to a point where we find some silver bullet to you know alleviate the deficit that we will incur without the use of antibiotics but at the moment, we just don't have a product that um, can match the efficacy. Labeling in poultry, the labeling of poultry products and even labels used in marketing or on, as advertising on the side of a poultry truck of products that get delivered to a store is very confusing. Um, part of my job as in a teaching role is to go into the community. It's, and sometimes I go to classrooms or I'll, I'll go talk to my kids school or things like that and discuss poultry and poultry production and um, the practices that we use. And one common question that I always get is about antibiotics or about hormones because they've read a label that said antibiotic free or no hormones added. And they wanna know why some companies do add hormones or add antibiotics when other companies don't. And so we have to have a discussion about what hormones actually are and what that means and that no companies actually use hormones and if you find the very small print on the lab packaging label in the grocery store it says that we don't use hormones that it was just a marketing tool when consumers ask me questions about chicken poultry industry or, or the chicken they eat in general um, the main two questions are about antibiotics and hormones and the first one is always hormones that seems to be the bigger concern from the everyday person and so I'd say, you know, we have never used hormones in chickens. Uh, yes, we have done it in a research setting. It's been tried to see what the effects were. It didn't have any effect on the quantities, the qualities that we want as producers. And it's been banned by the FDA and the USDA since the 1950s. And so it's never been an issue. What happened was a marketing scenario. And we go to kind of explain why, you know, one company said no hormones added. And then everybody just took that to mean that everybody, every other company did add hormones. But then sometimes you will get into the antibiotic question, um, people who are a little bit more knowledgeable about subjects in general, and they'll ask about the antibiotics and why we use them or what we use them for, or especially antibiotic resistance. That's a question that comes up um, from time to time. But we can say, you know, we, we have used antibiotics as growth promoters in the past. They were not medically important in human medicine for the most part. There were some classes that had overlap between human medicine and, and production animal medicine. Um, but we would use them to try to control, you know, bacterial disease outbreaks that can occur in our, um, in our housing systems. The growth potential of our modern chicken is really based on genetic potential. It has nothing to do with the use of steroids or the use of hormones. Back in the 19, I believe it was in the 1950s, the University of Arkansas had a nationwide competition for the chicken of tomorrow. And at that point, we didn't have a large integrated system. It was still mostly people growing chickens in their backyard and providing them to each other. There were some commercial operations, 
um, but they were being run mostly out of stores that supplied feed. They would also supply chickens, and so it was a, a small, small, very, very little integration to, uh, in the total production system. But they had this competition, and several people brought forth the bird. They had two years to sort of breed a bird that was going to be their, you know, their potential chicken. And several people came forward with their birds, and some of the names that you may recognize today, like Cobb and Ross, those people were the ones who won the competition. And that was sort of the beginning of the genetic selection of these birds. And so for the last 70 years, we have selected for growth potential for the meat birds and laying potential for our egg birds. And as we've made advances in genetic selection in growth and growth rate, we've also made advances in nutrition because this bird has great potential to be a very large meat producing bird but if we don't supply the nutrients it needs through nutrition if we don't keep the stress relatively low through our housing system if we don't provide uh, disease control through vaccines or antibiotics the birds will never reach their full potential genetically and so it's the genetics that have been driving this evolution of these larger birds and then the other sectors of the industry are always working to modify their systems to match the genetic potential so that we can have as efficient as possible of a production system to grow as much meat or to lay as many eggs as we can to provide meat and eggs to the, to the consumer. In a sense, the poultry industry has really shot itself in the foot in saying that we don't add hormones because that implicates everybody else that they do add hormones, which is not something that we do. There are so many different labeling claims for antibiotics, antibiotic free, all natural, organic, no antibiotic ever. It's really confusing to understand what all of these mean. Does that mean that you didn't use antibiotics as a growth promoter, as a, a low dose subtherapeutic level? Or did you not use antibiotics to treat sick flocks? If you didn't use antibiotics to treat sick flocks, does that then introduce animal welfare concern? If it's organic, does organic regulation allow you to use antibiotics? Does all natural regulation allow you to use antibiotics? Is there a governing body that says what is natural and what's organic? So we're, we're with the marketing claims, the uh, trying to appeal to the, the certain different sectors of consumers, we are introducing a lot of language that is not well defined and does create a lot of confusion to people who just want to be able to go buy chicken and know that it's safe for them to eat, for their kids to eat. The marketing claim of no antibiotics ever is also an interesting claim. Oh, does that mean no antibiotics ever, period? Um, or does that mean no antibiotics ever unless there's an outbreak? And I don't think that there's a consensus on what it actually means. I think it differs by company. Um, I believe there are some producers, small producers out there that will say no antibiotics ever, period, and that they will never use them. Uh, I also think there are other companies who say no antibiotics ever, but for animal welfare reasons will treat therapeutically if there is a disease outbreak. Um, which companies are which, I don't know specifically, but I don't think there's a single definition on what that means.